Hey everyone, it's Jim with Mediotech Weather. Hey everyone, it's Jim with Mediotech Weather. Hey everyone, it's Jim with Mediotech Weather. Hey everyone, it's Jim from Mediotech Weather. What's up guys, it's Kayla with Mediotech Weather. What's up guys, it's Jim and Kayla from Mediotech Weather. We're going to take a look at Hurricane Dorian and where it's going to be headed. The hurricane is just northeast of Puerto Rico. It looks like the hurricane has continued to move northwest and is going to become a major hurricane. Hurricane Dorian is continuing to take a track toward the Florida Peninsula at this point. Right now maximum sustained winds are 115 miles an hour with some higher gusts. Notice that the models are trending further east. The storm is now a strong category 5 with winds at 185 miles an hour gusting to 225 and it has made landfall a little bit earlier in the northwest Bahamas and is still continuing its westward track heading toward the Florida Peninsula. Uh, it looks like the hurricane has basically grinded to a halt at this point over the Grand Bahama Island. The track from the National Hurricane Center does not show uh, a landfall at this point, but it does take it very, very close to the Florida East Coast. Hurricane Dorian has weakened quite a bit since our last update. It is down to maximum sustained winds of 110 miles an hour. The hurricane is forecast to turn more north and then eventually northeast as the trough up to the north starts picking up the hurricane. Thursday late afternoon, uh, early evening will be the time frame for the southeast North Carolina beaches. It looks like the Carolinas are next in the crosshairs for Hurricane Dorian. The hurricane watches and warnings continue for all of the Carolinas at this point. The models actually take the eye of Dorian a little bit closer to the Carolina coastline compared to the Florida coastline. In addition to the heavy rain and the wind, we'll also see storm surge flooding. Some areas of the Carolinas will experience roughly between three to six, three to seven feet of storm surge flooding. That, that is water on top of the normal high tide that would occur. The Carolinas, especially North Carolina, definitely pay attention to this storm. I am here in Surf City looking at Hurricane Dorian. The maximum sustained winds right now are about 115, so we can expect the winds and rain to start picking up throughout the day. Today is Friday, September 6th, and Hurricane Dorian made landfall at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina this morning around 8.35. Currently, Dorian is moving to the northeast off into the Atlantic. Thank you guys for following us and keeping up with us on this Dorian journey. And thank you so much for the comments and feedback on all of our social media platforms. And we definitely look forward to doing more videos like this in the future. So thanks again, guys. What's up guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Meteorology Monday. So as you can tell by that montage that you just watched in the beginning of the video, today is going to be a vlog on everything that me and dad did for Hurricane Dorian. If you don't follow us on Facebook, then you probably didn't see the updates that we did every day over there leading up to Dorian making landfall in Cape Hatteras the other day. So that beginning was a compilation uh, made from those videos. On top of forecasting the hurricane leading up to the event, we also went out to the coast to see Dorian start making landfall and experience the at least the tropical storm force uh, area of the hurricane. So on Wednesday night we drove down to Southport, North Carolina and we planned on staying the night there and then Thursday maybe driving up to Wilmington, maybe part of the southern Outer Banks and um, get some footage from there and grab some pictures and we were gonna try to get pictures of the beach um, and all of that fun stuff before the winds and the storm surge came in. As with everything in life, not everything goes to plan. So, we arrive in Southport at about one o'clock in the morning, Wednesday night or Thursday morning, whichever one you wanna call that, and we get into my aunt's house and we're gonna stay there and grab some sleep and maybe about six o'clock wake up and try to find the sunrise. Uh, assuming that the clouds weren't blocking it and see if we could get like an epic beach sunrise with uh, the outer bands of Dorian in the picture as well. What ended up happening was we woke up at like 4.20 in the morning to the loudest bang I've ever heard in my life. Turns out that the outer band that was supposed to come in around 6 or 7 around sunrise uh, came in a bit earlier 
and ended up providing us a lightning storm at four o'clock in the morning. Now, as a storm chaser and growing up in Florida with all the hurricanes, I have been around lightning before, but never before in my life have I heard lightning that loud. It was so loud that I woke up to the thunder, but I could still see the light from the lightning as I was waking up to the thunder. Terrified because of this lightning bolt and questioning my choice to drive to the coast during a hurricane, I pulled out my radar and thought I would take a look at what was coming towards us. So let me just pop up a little radar image right here of what I saw when I pulled up my radar at 4.30 in the morning. Yes, you would be correct. That is rotation and that is a water spout coming in off of the ocean. So now I've been woken up to lightning. That scared me half to death. I am looking at this radar and seeing tornadoes all throughout this outer band that's now making its way onto the coast and thinking, well, goodness, this is not the smartest situation that I have ever put myself in. Also, since dad had to work that Thursday and Friday, I had mom and my little sister with me. So I was thinking, not only are we in a dangerous situation, but I also have to think about the safety of my mom and sister. So I go over to mom and I'm like, hey, um, not to alarm you, it kind of looks like there might be a tornado coming in off the water. As soon as that rotation made its way onto land, sure enough, there was the tornado warning. I'll pop up a little picture of the tornado uh, alert that we got on our phones that night as well. And this lasted until about six o'clock in the morning. I think we had um, three, four, five tornado warnings over the next was that an hour and a half between 4.30 and 6 o'clock? So we made a fort in the bathroom and just ended up camping there until the sun came up and that outer band started moving away. Thankfully that band kind of rotated up to the north and none of the tornadoes actually touched down uh, within the few miles around our house. After that band went through, we were home free for a couple hours as the sun started coming out a little bit and the rain had stopped. We packed up all of our stuff, hopped in the car, and drove over to Oak Island, which is on the other side of Southport across a bridge, and figured we would try to take pictures of the beach before they closed the bridge as the wind started getting stronger throughout the day. We didn't end up making it as far as we wanted to due to the roads already starting to flood, but we did get a couple awesome pictures of the beach that I'm really happy with and really proud of, so I will insert those right here. After that a whole morning fiasco, we spent the rest of the day driving around. We went up to uh, Wilmington and north of Wilmington and then back down south of Wilmington and went back down to Southport, all over the place. In Wilmington, we encountered a lot of like flash flooding, which was something that was very new to me. I hadn't seen roads flood that quickly, I think ever. Um, we were driving in like a torrential downpour for maybe seven to ten minutes and then all of a sudden the roads were just completely washed out in Wilmington. So I'll throw in a clip of what we saw there right here as well. Look at that water spray up as the cars were going through it. Why they were driving through it and that fast instead of pulling over is besides me. Obviously, as you can see, we're parked, so we pulled over. You couldn't see through the windshield because 
the rain was coming down so hard and you definitely couldn't see the lines on the road because there was like six inches of water on it. But after that, it started calming down and we could safely use our windshield wipers again and see the roads um, and we found a way around the huge puddles and we continued north. Our next stop was Surf City NC and we got some time-lapse videos there and I'll put that in right here. So you might be wondering at this point, Kayla, you said that you were going to a hurricane and it didn't even look like you were being blown over. So it obviously wasn't that windy and it obviously wasn't raining in those time lapses. So what gives? Well, my friends, at this point, when this footage was all taken, the eye of the hurricane was still down by Charleston, South Carolina. So it was still really far away and we were already feeling the effects of it up in Wilmington and Surf City. At this point, it's maybe one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon, and we're trying to decide where do we wanna go. We want to experience the hurricane force winds, but at the same time, we don't want to be stuck on the East Coast as this hurricane is barreling down and potentially making landfall somewhere here. So we just decided to go back to Southport for a little bit and gather up our things and take a break from driving in the torrential downpour as Southport uh, had been dry for most of the day. Uh, they did not get impacted very much during the day and morning on Thursday. After a bit of waiting around there, we decided just to drive home instead of waiting for the hurricane force winds again because we didn't want to get stuck in all of the mess that the eye wall would potentially bring to the southeastern NC coast. So there's a little story time about what exactly happened on the chase day since we didn't record a lot while we were chasing. Um, due to obvious reasons with scary lightning and flooding. I think I have a couple more clips to show you guys, so I will put those in now. So that was a little bit of a look into Hurricane Dorian and what we did whilst forecasting beforehand and going out into the field to get some pictures and some of the crazy stuff that we encountered along the way. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. We'll be posting more pictures of Dorian on our social media, so follow us here on our Facebook and Instagram. Not everything makes it onto Facebook and Instagram though, so go ahead and check out our Patreon page linked down below. Over there you can help support us and support our chase trips, and you also get access to more photos and behind the scenes stuff. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy hurricane forecasting. And chasing. <laughs>